Welcome uh, to this week's program, the beginning of our seventh season of Ascend TV. Today our program is the Curious Incident Comes to the Bay Area. Uh, it will be uh, interviewing the producer of the program, Sinjin Jones, who will be discussing uh, this very interesting production that he's putting on. Uh, I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. And before we begin with the questioning, Will, what's with your shirt? Funny you should ask that, because... The, this week's shirt is my Seattle Seahawks shirt. It, it represents the, the, the Seattle Seahawks themselves. My uncle CB and Aunt Julie sent this for me to me from Seattle. That's where they live, and and they they're Seahawks fans. So so they sent me a, a, a Seahawks jersey. How did you decide to produce the Curious Incident, and why did you choose this play? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's such a wonderful opportunity, and I'm super excited. I'm relatively new to the Bay Area, and so I'm still getting to know all the all the mm -hmm. places and faces here, and so this seems a, a really incredible opportunity for me. Um, so The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, the novel is by Mark Haddon, and uh, he wrote this incredibly powerful novel mm -hmm. that talks about difference and, and how other people interact with it. And um, then, then Simon Stevens adapted to the play, and very, very, very... Um, incredibly popular and in in big production on Broadway. Um, one of the things that that our director Melinda in in her proposal her name is Melinda Marks um, and one of the things was really important to her was that she wanted to tell the story in a way that was small, intimate and accessible. Um, because a lot of the Broadway productions and the regional productions, mm -hmm. the touring productions, really try to be really big about it. It tackles an issue that I think is is imperatively important, which is this idea of of how do people in our lives handle difference. Um, and I think the but the the book does an incredible job at that, and the play does a phenomenal job at sort of getting us into the mind um, of Christopher, the main character, who um, just you know acts, behaves, um, thinks differently than other people around him, um, and it does a really incredible job illuminating um, both the the struggles of that for him, and then how that impacts the way he interacts with the world, and I think. Because of that reason, because it's such a beautifully heartfelt story, mm -hmm. um, and because it is an opportunity for us to to explore um, a, a different understanding of diversity than people often talk about, mm -hmm. it, it makes it a really perfect production for the Pear Theater for us down in Mountain View. Um, so we're, we're super excited. And I think when Betsy, my my predecessor, was was looking at choosing the season, um, it struck us as, as, as a theater who really wants to um, invite, unite, and ignite sort of discussion and invite people to be along for the ride, that as we sort of grow and explore new sets of diverse, diverse issues and, 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 and what that word diverse means, that we really include a play that, that talks about diversity in this way. And I think that's one of the most incredible things we can do. Not to mention, it's just an awesome play. It's mm -hmm. really funny. It's really engaging. And it's just an enjoyable thing to experience, you know? Tell us about tell us about what the tell us about what the curious incident is about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for so people who have read the book will will be um, familiar with this story, but not in exactly the same way. Um, the story of the play uh, we start with Christopher, um, who's the main character. He's a fifteen year old, um, and he although it's not mentioned um, explicitly in either the book or the play, um, he sort of uh, exhibits what sort of um, behavior that would be uh, typically associated with, with Asperger's syndrome on the autism spectrum. Um, and he is standing over the, the body of this dog, um, and it's his neighbor's dog, and people come upon him in the nighttime, curious incident mm -hmm. of the dog in the nighttime, um, and he sort of... Uh, he's accused of killing this dog and, and, um, Christopher is obviously 100% certain that he did not do this. Um, and so the first act becomes this incredible mystery of Christopher deciding, I need to find out who did this and I will stop at nothing to figure out and solve this mystery. Uh, and then the second act becomes sort of the fallout of his discovery of, um, who actually committed this crime and also, um, what that unlocks, 
um, about his story and his life. And so without ruining too much, it mm -hmm. really is an adventure that Christopher goes on and sort of finding out more about his life and his family um, and then how to interact with a larger world because I think um, Christopher has lived a life in this town and um, he gets to explore, it takes place in, in um, the United Kingdom, he gets to explore London in, in uh, extreme amount of detail, which mm -hmm. is really exciting. So it's really this mystery of like, who killed this dog? And then beyond that is this larger mystery of like, what are the things that Christopher doesn't know about his family and how does he go about finding those things? Um, and as a human being, uh, Christopher is, and he says this very directly, very honest, he never lies. Mm -hmm. um, and he always is interested in, in what the truth is, no matter what the consequences of that are. And so it's a really fascinating story of how this, 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 this boy, this teenager, goes about finding the truth of this situation, no matter what, because he's very dedicated to, to finding the truth, whatever, whatever the truth might be. Who portrays Christopher, the main character? Is this actor is this actor on the autism spectrum? It's a great question. So um, the actor that plays uh, Christopher is his name is Henry Alper. Um, he is an incredible uh, young man who sort of just sort of is bursting onto the Bay Area theater scene. Um, the he he is not to my knowledge on the autism spectrum. I think we we are in this curious. Uh, so the our director Melinda Marks is um, is on the autism spectrum, recently mm. diagnosed, um, and is sort of in her proposal as a as as a as when she was proposing to direct this show, she sort of talked about her experience, and, and I've talked about what she's interested in having me share and not share, and I think um, as a part of her proposal, I think she's interested in exploring that um, this idea of of uh, what it means to be different. Mm -hmm. um, and what it means to explore those, 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 um, what it means to be neurodivergent and, 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 and what it means to be on the autism spectrum because she's sort of in the beginning stages of what that looks like for her. Um, the, the interesting thing about casting in a production is we can, as a theater, we can say, please, groups from all backgrounds, please come audition. It's a legally and morally dubious area to have a paper where people mark I, I am on mm -hmm. I am on the autism spectrum. I am not on the autism spectrum. So it becomes a little bit of a tricky, challenging aspect for us because when we sent out the audition call, we sort of sent it out with the idea that we would that and with the very clear indication that we wanted folks um, that are on the autism spectrum and not on the autism spectrum to be auditioning for these roles. Mm -hmm. uh, but when they get in the room, we actually just have no idea. Um, who is and who isn't and it and it's sort of a strange um, and this is something that I still feel like I'm growing on is sort of it's hard to broach that con that conversation in the context of an audition mm -hmm. because it's five minutes when people are coming yep. in they're delivering their work and they're leaving um, and I think especially because the 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 um, the book and the the script are both really clear about exploring difference in broad terms, I think. And because Melinda is really ex interested in getting into the mental um, headspace of this, I think we ended up with an actor I think is incredible at the, at the role. Um, and I think that's important. And I think um, with Melinda representing that background in a meaningful fashion, I think it helps us further the conversation in a meaningful way. My name is Melinda Marks and I'm the director. This play is unique because it's flexible. Um, it allows for a degree of flexibility that we can play with, um, with space and time and roles. It's kind of nonlinear. It moves from person to person really quickly. And it's basically the story of a story. So you have a lot of flexibility in how you tell that story. Um, do you tell it as if it's happening in the moment or do you tell it as though you know, you're sort of an outside observer in the story. So I think we try to play with all that stuff. I think that the play is intended to raise more questions about how you perceive it and where you sort of are and how you feel at the end of it after you see the things that this character, you know, has has experienced. Um, I think the message of this play is merely that the storytelling is not exclusive to a specific point of view. And whatever message people get out of that, I think any kind of thoughtful 
reflective message or even just thinking, you know, critically about things that you saw that you liked or didn't like. I think that that's overall the message of the play is just offering another perspective. I have a great cast um, and people who are really willing to explore um, possibilities and explore um, how they can contribute to a perspective in really sensitive, um, emotional, open ways. And I'm really grateful to have an inquisitive, um, uh, really critically with it cast to feel a, a deep connection to really helping each other tell the story. I understand that you have yet to begin the production, um, but you've got a lot of uh, tickets already sold. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about the logistics of how, if they're interested, they might be able to purchase tickets and when the performance will be, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely. So so um, the Pear Theater is down in Mountain View, very near the Googleplex, right off of um, the 101. Um, it's a really cool little space tucked back uh, among all the tech buildings. We opened the show on March 13th, so mm -hmm. we're really right in the center of the rehearsal process right now. And I'm sure a lot will change between now and then, as it always does. Um, we open March 13th. We have shows Thursday nights at 7.30, Friday nights and Saturday nights at 8 p.m., and then Sundays we have matinees at 2 p.m., and we run through April 5th. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are about 16 opportunities for people to see. Our tickets are selling actually quite quickly. Excellent. And so I would recommend folks get their tickets as soon as possible. Um, and then <laughs> we're actually super excited. We're going to offer um, like a $5 coupon code for for. Uh, for folks who are associated with the Ascend group. Um, Thank you and, very much. Um, I'll, I'll leave information here, but the, mm -hmm. the, the code will be ASCEND with two A's 2020. And we'll put that in our ticketing system so people can buy tickets ahead of time. Because um, it's really important to us that a, 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 a group, a, a wide variety of people can see the show and, and that we get, um, you know, the, we're interested in exploring diversity. So if um, diverse voices aren't coming to see the show, um, then it's not worth <laughs> it's not worth doing anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and we have another interesting and valuable thing. Like um, we do talkbacks. We will be doing talkbacks after every Sunday matinee. And so if people are interested in, in talking about the issues that the show brings up, or about how more getting more in detail and firsthand about how Henry approached the role, or how Melinda approached the directing, Sunday afternoons are the really the, the great time to come because you can have a talkback with the actors and the and the director. Um, to sort of like explore their process in more detail. Excellent. Um, up to this point, uh, both in your research and preparation for the production as well as what you've heard that other productions have done, are the responses by the uh, autistic community that have surprised you? Yeah, that's a great question. I think one of the things that Melinda put in her original directing proposal as she sort of pitched um, directing this project for us was that she was really interested in reaching out to the the communities of autistic uh, of, of those who who sort of represent the autistic community in the area. Um, one of the things that surprised me as I sort of took over this job is how challenging it has been to to, to get in touch with those groups and to have those responses come mm -hmm. in. I think, and I mean, rightfully so. There's like a lot to be done, and sometimes this like community production doesn't fall to the like top of the radar for for people. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that we're super interested in is is in at least some of the to some of the talkbacks we want to have representatives from groups like Ascend come and talk about their mm -hmm. experience with the show and and sort of represent groups around the area um, and we also do like we will donate all of our proceeds for at least one of our productions to a group and so we've been reaching out with those sorts of things and it's been a little bit challenging to sort of get in and I think um, I mean and, and, and that that is a thing that has surprised me I think in my in the research that I've done and Melinda's done with other productions I think <clears throat> not so much surprising but I think one of the things that the show does really, really well is talk about this this unique this one unique experience. I don't think the play and and, and, and Mark Haddon and Simon Stevens both have talked about how important it was that they did not specifically pigeonhole this character into one type of mm -hmm. divergence. Um, but it's I think what people have said is that it's really valuable to see this experience and to feel this experience um, in terms of. Uh, what it's like to live in, 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 in one or more of these sort of categories. Uh, so how can people get involved in audition for a 
to be in regional theater? Yeah, that's a great question. Awesome. Um, because it's also one of my things, certainly uh, being a, a person of color, to get more diverse voices of, of all backgrounds mm -hmm. into our doors and auditioning. Um, and uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's it, at, at, at times both really easy and really difficult, right? Because the way auditions work is you prepare sort of a monologue that you have memorized. And if you're doing musical theater, um, which we do about one musical a year, um, if you do musical theater, you want to prepare a song as well. Um, and then there are a lot of ways you can find auditions. Theater Bay Area is the big hub of, of auditions, mm -hmm. um, but it costs money to be a part of it. And so sure. you have to make a decision about how, how much you want to invest in that. Um, but there are also Facebook groups that you can go online and um, just like search for Bay Area acting auditions and you can get into these groups that will tell you when auditions are happening. And mm -hmm. then um, you just, you know, sign up for those auditions. You come out and we audition you just, you know, um, with, you know, maybe 30, 40, 50 other people, depending awesome. on the, the show. And then... Um, there are usually two rounds of auditions. There's a basic audition where you just come in, you do your monologue and your song, uh -huh. and then you you leave. And then there's yeah. a and then if 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 you sort of fit um, the the show in mm -hmm. question, um, then there are usually callbacks where you read with a bunch of other actors, right? And to see if you, what your chemistry is with other actors, to see how those sorts of things work. Yeah. And um, and then you're and then you're either cast or you're not cast. One thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you were gonna... Yeah, you get the experience and whether you get in it or not. And what I, I'm someone of multiple interests. I like musicals and strip plays. Yeah. And so it'd be interesting to see how anyone, you know, could be utilized and have other types of, you know, interests and possibilities for yeah. them, right? Well, and yeah. I think the, the, the tricky thing and, and the wonderful thing uh -huh. is that no matter how incredible of a performer you are, yeah, oftentimes... Yeah. Like, I act, I do mo more directing than acting, sure. but I act pretty frequently. And, and one of the things that I've learned is that, you know, 90% of the things are going to be rejections. More oh, often than not, you're just, people are just going to say no for one reason or another. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I think it, it, the more you do it, though, the more you're on people's radar and the more people know. Exactly. Um, we have auditions coming up. We, we are in the middle right now of announcing our next season that starts in July. Of the same show? Uh, no, of, of the, the next set of, of the next set of shows that we'll do in gotcha. the fall. Okay. Um, and so... We have auditions coming up in April, um, and I'm happy to provide a send awesome. with, with sort of the details of those in, uh, mm -hmm. once those sort of become public, but mm -hmm. happy to do that as well. But I think you go out and try because that's the best way mm -hmm. to get experience. It's the best exactly. way to learn. You can't, mm -hmm. you can't get better at it if you don't try. Ex exactly. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yes. Uh, what if somebody wants to get involved on the script writing side, I myself am a part-time amateur playwright. I've written a play featuring an autistic on the spectrum main character, and I wrote it for the Stanford Neurodiversity Project, but you know, I would love for it to be read more widely and performed and just to get the story out. Yeah. And I understand that there's a playwrights guild that people can submit to. Can you tell us how that works? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, I will say one of the things that um, that play that theater needs more of is more diverse voices um, and and more main characters written for a variety of different people. And I think so that makes me really excited immediately. Um, we do have a playwrights guild. There are a, a bunch of playwrights groups around. I think sometimes they're a little bit insular, so it's a, it takes a little bit of time to get involved in them. So the pair started a playwrights guild sort of very near when the pair started, um, and that would be like 15, 16, 17 years ago. Um, the, play, the, the pair theater, our, our next season is our 19th year, and I think the playwrights guild started 17 years ago or something like that. Um, and it's a group of writers that get together. They meet every two weeks. Um, and they uh, read each other's work, and, and we have opportunities at the pair to get your work read out loud in full production form and in short play form, um, and, and, we, and with readings. Uh, what is and the so, difference between full production and short play? Is it just yeah, length? so yeah, so so we do full production. We do like a fully staged production of ten minute plays. We do staged readings, so like readings out loud of full length plays, um, and the player pair playwrights guild can submit their plays to me for consideration as a part of our season. Um, in order to, so to submit what the playwright skill, how the playwright skill work is um, writers like yourself submit writing to the group via our website, thepair.org. Um, and then at least two writers from the playwright skill read that writing. And then they sort of decide if you are going to become a part of the pair playwright skill. 
Yeah. So I can will I say, go to that website and submit my play? Yep, you can go right now. What I will say is that mo all of the members who are in there now, uh, of all of them, every one of them except for one have had to submit more than one piece of work before they got in. In fact, many of them have submitted four or five plays before they've gotten accepted into the guild. And so the idea is, if you are passionate about writing, and look, I'm in a master's program for writing right now. I love writing. Well, congratulations. Um, thank cool. you. Uh, it's Regis University in Colorado. I just moved here recently from Colorado, and it's a, a low residency program. Um, and so I go back there a few times a year to do stuff. But uh, it takes, it's all about the practice of it, right? And as with any group, um, it's, you might not get in the first time, you might not get in the second time, but it's about continuing to produce work and continuing to, to, to go see theater so that you can get a perspective on, on what makes good, good plays and then uh, submitting the work as it gets better. Um, and, and once you're in the Playwrights Guild, uh, there's a, a, a ton of really cool opportunities um, uh, for, for getting 10-minute plays um, and full-length plays sort of read in front of people so that you can continue to grow as a writer. Thank you. We'll now hear from Jennifer uh, Brooks, our book correspondent. Thank you, Keith. So, as some of you may already know, the Stanford Neurodiversity Project is presenting a conference on March 21st. It will be held on the Stanford University campus in Palo Alto. For more information, you can go to the website of the Stanford Neurodiversity Project, click for a couple of links, and it will tell you all about it. And, Speaking of conferences, my book review today will focus on some books that have come out of conferences or that relate to the upcoming conference. The first is titled, New Developments in Autism, The Future is Today. This book was published in 2005, so their future was 15 years ago, but believe me, this is still relevant came out of a conference that was held in Madrid, Spain in May of 2005. Yes, Virginia, there are people with autism in Spain. There are people with autism in every country. And it's good to see some other countries having conferences, not just ours. And the second book is, this is what the upcoming Stanford conference will be focusing on, how to find work that works for people with autism. This book was very well-intentioned, and I do commend the author for writing it because we do need books about this subject. Unfortunately, the focus of the book is about how to get the employee on the autism spectrum to conform to the employer. She has very little to nothing to say about possibly changing workplaces to be more accommodating to employees with Asperger's. It's an idea that's so crazy that it just might work. Third is a book called Learning and Behavior Problems in Asperger's Syndrome. It must be emphasized that not everyone with Asperger's Syndrome has learning and behavior problems. Many of them get high test scores, never stir up trouble, and our model students that teachers try to get everyone else in the class to be like at the expense of completely ignoring the kid who has Asperger's. In fact, that happened to a young woman named, what is her name? Named Wendy Lawson, who contributed an essay to this book about her experiences at school. Teachers should be forced to read that. Maybe then they'll get it through their heads that Ignoring these kids is not okay. Finally, Asperger's Syndrome, intervening in schools, clinics, and communities. Just, um, talks about first some general ways to help people on the spectrum of all ages, and then discusses specific age groups, children, adolescents, and middle and high school students, college students, and then into two special concerns of adults, sexual relationships, and legal issues. There is a, uh, there's going to be a sensory-friendly film on uh, February 29th, Saturday, um, Sonic the Hedgehog. Go see it.
Very good. Check the participating theaters online, of course, at the AMC uh, website, um, and check under programs slash uh, sensory friendly films. Friday, March 6th, is an open art reception uh, at Creativity Explored, um, uh, taking place at the SF Art uh, Institute uh, at Pier 2. There's also a mention about Fort Mason Center for Arts and Culture. Um, Anna Teresa Fernandez presents um, what it is, is an open art reception of Here From There. That's the title of it. And there's immersive installation surrounds where visitors will be surrounded by fantastical large-scale sculptures on which animated and time-lapsed uh, videos will be projected. And that starts at 6, goes to 9 p.m., so p.m. The same, the same evening, there's going to also be the Friends Like Me Spring Gala, which will be taking place at the uh, Salesforce Tower. So um, that starts at... 5.30 p.m. or around that time or so. But yeah, if you want more information on that, you need to email uh, Marty Sullivan at M-S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N at thearcsf.org. Thank you. Thank Perfect. you. Uh, actually, Christopher, I know we're running a bit short of time, but I have one brief final question. Um, from your study of the character and as an actor, would you say that Christopher in The Curious Incident is a sufficiently strong character that he could replace uh, Raymond in Rayman in the eyes of the general public as to who a typical uh, person on the spectrum might be? That's a great question. And I know we're running out of time, so I'll be brief. I think the thing that the play does really, really well is it lets us um, explore the mind of this one person. Mm -hmm. And I think it does that really, really well. I, I think it does a better job than Rain Man of exploring that character. I think I would be interested in seeing, as both a producer, a director, and a performer, more roles that clearly integrate folks with autism or on the spectrum um, into mainstream society better mm -hmm. as the way that it happens in the real world. Um, but, I, and, and so I don't know that the play intends to do that, nor does I, do I think the play does that particularly well. Mm -hmm. But I do think that the play does an incredible job of, of, of helping neurotypical people um, understand a little bit more about what, the, what, what happens um, in the mind of someone, of Christopher, if that makes sense. Excellent. Well, thank you again, uh, Sinjin Jones. We really appreciate uh, you attending here. And we wish you the very best of luck in your forthcoming production. One brief, uh, one brief uh, reminder to our viewers about when it will open. Yeah, we open on March 13th, and we play through April 5th. Excellent. And this is showing where? At the Pear Theater in Mountain View, California. Thank you again. Well, everyone, uh, that's it for this week's program. Uh, until next time, I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. Stacey Kennedy. Cynthia Jones. Jennifer Brooks. And we're a Send TV Life on the Autism Spectrum. Take care and have a, a great week. See you next month.